Hi guys and welcome back to Class Creative. It's been a while since I uploaded a video as I've been focusing on the project of opening up a new art studio. More about that in another video. Now it's completed, I'm ready to start sharing with you guys some fresh art material. Over the coming weeks, I'll be creating a selection of acrylic painting tutorials for those of you who do want to level up on your skills with acrylics. And today I'm going to be sharing with you a 15 step tutorial to teach you how to apply a wide range of effective and transferable techniques working with this very simple colour palette. Materials you will need to create this reed mace painting are one sheet of A3, so it could be acrylic paper, it could be an A3 canvas, but in my tutorial here I'm using a canvas panel, one of the thin ones, so that I can actually transport it quite easily. Um, you're also going to need four brushes, so a number nine long flat brush, a number nine short flat, a number six round and a two inch decorator's brush. You will need a palette knife, two jars of water, disposable palette that I've got here or just any type of painting palette, sponge, a water sprayer, acrylic matte medium. Um, here I'm using acrylic gel uh, medium from the brand Liquitex and five acrylic paint colours. You will need burnt umber, yellow ochre, ultramarine, titanium white and burnt sienna. So firstly let's get rid of the white to set our scene. Work with the 2 inch brush here to make sure you drag your brush marks horizontal not vertical. So here you need to dilute some brown paint with a little bit of water. Here I'm using my personal preferred acrylic paint sets from the brand Arteza. You can use any brand you like but Arteza I particularly am fond of. Um, we're going to paint an undertone here just to get rid of any whites um, and you can also combine your browns if you want to with a little bit of yellow ochre, uh, burnt sienna and burnt umber. But just make sure that it's a nice thin layer and that dries fairly quickly. Step one, mix ultramarine and white on your palette with the painting knife. Spread a narrow band of colour along the top edge of the board for the sky. Then paint the distant bank of the lake with a rough mix of yellow ochre, white and slight touches of burnt umber. Suggest the outline of trees and bushes with the tip of the palette knife. Now you can paint your lake using loose mixes of ultramarine, white and touches of burnt umber. Leave the pigment virtually pure in places and let the board show through in others. Make sweeping horizontal strokes. The edge of the knife is useful for suggesting different wave patterns. We're not aiming for realism here, we're going for an impressionistic style, so very loose and suggestive marks are great. Feel free to alternate between the paintbrush and the palette knife where you want the smoother areas and leave the palette knife for the areas where you want to show ripples and surface texture. Step two, continue applying ultramarine and white to the water, then wet the area with a water sprayer very gently. Blend the edges of wet colour with a decorator's brush, but don't overwork the paint. The horizontal strokes of unmixed colour and the textured ridges produced by the brush suggest rippled water in the background. Continue painting the water with pale mixes of ultramarine and white. Make horizontal strokes back and forth across the board with the same brush, spraying on a little more water if needed. Apply the paint thinly like a glaze, letting the warm tone of the board show here and there. Add more blue, then burnt umber as you move down to the foreground, then leave your painting to dry. So if you prefer, you can turn your canvas upside down so that you focus on what you're seeing as shapes rather than the actual photo or reference image. Here I'm just sort of loosely mixing my yellow ochre and burnt umber with the palette knife and I'm going to use that in very loose sweeping strokes with the palette knife um, to build up the reed mace at the foreground. Um, so 
when you turn something upside down it does force you to concentrate on a detail without your distraction from your overall composition um, but for me I'm actually preferring just to have my canvas the right side up so you need to make long vertical strokes with the painting knife in some areas and short dabs in others here you can see the subtle yet realistic colour mixes used to suggest the dense clumps of reeds. Still working with the painting upside down if you want to, you can take up a small individual dollops of yellow ochre, white, burnt umber and ultramarine and apply them to the board. Allow them to blend as you work loosely and freely with the knife, creating smooth areas as well as ridges with more paint. This also helps suggest individual stems and leaves. Texture and tone can be built up by placing angled slabs of colour next to others and some over the top of each other. There are light areas over dark ones and vice versa. A few diagonal stems complement and add interest to the composition. They also break up the uniformity of the vertical stems, providing a sense of balance to your painting. Okay guys, so you want to wet your brush, just moisten it and get a nice fine shape on the end there. I'm just showing you the colours that I'm working with here, so titanium white, ultramarine, burnt umber, burnt sienna and yellow ochre. I'm using my number 9 flathead brush to mix together some white and yellow ochre and then once I've come up with a tint that I'm happy with then I'm going to apply that to the canvas to create the reed heads. Think about the light source in this painting, so to the left side of the Reese Maid's head I'm painting a thin strip of uh, burnt umber using the smaller flathead brush and then you can accentuate the lighter side as well on the right hand side with lighter tints of your paint mix. Then using the number 9 short flat brush Paint the darkest foreground tones with mixes of burnt umber and ultramarine. You don't always have to use black, in fact no black has been used within this painting to create our shadow and depth. We've simply used the dark brown and the ultramarine to create that dark shadowy tone. Allow the brown to dominate the mix in some areas and the ultramarine to dominate in others to provide more sense of depth. Paint quickly with short vertical strokes of colour, pushing the brush bristles hard against the board. As you move back into the reeds, drag a dryish brush over the ground to give a misty effect, creating a sense of perspective. To enhance perspective, I also alternate between the larger brush for the foreground closest to us and the uh, midground a little bit further away, I use the smaller flathead brush. So here I'm just using a dark piece of card to experiment with my mark making techniques. I'm using impasto paint, very thick um, a mix of yellow ochre and white. And you want to just let yourself go here and just twist and flick your brush to create those interesting marks that were going to be used for the flowers in the foreground of the reed mace. Once you're happy with your mark making, then you can go ahead and just let yourself go on the canvas and create your flowers. Try to randomise your brush marks here because you don't want them to look very uniform. I've alternated between larger flicks of the brush and smaller flicks of the brush and also at different angles as well. Using the same paint mix, highlight the right side of your reed mace heads to show where the low evening light is reflected. Allow the painting then to dry completely. Okay guys, so now we're moving on to the matte gel medium. The brand that I'm using here is called Liquitex. Um, I just picked this one up from Hobbycraft. Um, so this is used by pouring out or squeezing out an amount with equal part water. I actually here in the video I squeezed out a little bit too much so as I'm only using an A3 size canvas board next time I probably just squeeze out one teaspoon and add one teaspoon of water to mix into our paste. Um, so that's what I'm doing here is that I'm mixing out three teaspoons of uh, matte gel 
medium and then three teaspoons of water and mix that together until you have an even paste and then you need to add your color so the color that I'm going to be using is burnt sienna and the purpose of that is to warm up the reed mace to create an effective rich evening light and um, we're going to make an uneven, uh, uneven application using different intensities of warmth giving the impression of shimmering light so you can for that use your um, number nine long flat, flat brush and scrub on the translucent color with rush strokes in different directions to achieve that Here, in order to enhance the depth of the reed mace, I'm just mixing ultramarine and um, burnt umber to just add some more dashes and flicks to build it all up. And equally, if you want to add some lighter tints, um, I have used a uh, yellow ochre and white again, um, and just to sort of apply a little bit more depth into the texture of the grass. Once that's dry to the touch, then you can apply a second coat of that gel matte medium glaze, this time using a sponge just to dab on over the grassy area only. Um, so very gently dabbing it on um, and then blending it out using that sponge, working my way up and to add a little bit more depth and distance between the water and the grass, you can also overlap the glaze slightly onto the water's edge. Once the glaze is dry to the touch, finally you can re-establish the light tones over the glaze with the number six round brush. Use dry mixes of white with a little yellow ochre added in. Apply the paint boldly and thickly in dots, dabs and some longer strokes. Again, the painting style here is impressionistic, so it's not going to be like a photograph. Um, some of the reads that I've done here are quite um, bold in their appearance. So this one I'm just doing a dotted dashed line um, just to give the illusion of lightness and darkness uh, without even adding the darker bit in the background. And again that just adds to the character of the painting um, but it's really now starting to show that depth with the glaze behind and now putting the foreground reeds in front really just gives lots of um, textures and lovely um, movement into our picture. You will also want to stand back from your painting to assess it. You may want to em emphasise the dark tone between the reeds and the water with a wet mix of ultramarine, white and touch of burnt umber. Because the glazes have the effect of warming and muting colours, you may find you need to lighten the foreground even further. Don't be nervous when applying the paint quite thickly in this area, virtually pure white pigment with just a touch of yellow ochre achieves a very dramatic effect. It's important here as well to make sure that you randomise the grass stems, adding different tapered line thicknesses and to do that tapered line you just need to push your brush quite firmly onto your board and then with a lighter flick at the end that will achieve the nice point of your grass. When you feel you've finished, stop what you're doing, pat yourself on the back and admire your painting. Well done, thanks for watching this video and please subscribe to my channel to support. Thanks for watching guys!